So we want to continue our time in worship this morning by, par by participating in the Lord's Supper. This is a time where believers examine their hearts and remember the saving work of Christ in their lives. Jesus came down from heaven and took on the likeness of man so that he could suffer and die for all sinners who would repent and believe in him. Our passage for communion this morning is Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand. Uh, the men will be coming down the aisles with Bibles for you to use. Uh, if you don't own a Bible, please take this one with you and consider it a gift from Grace Bible Church. Please pray with me. Father, we are so grateful to know your word, to know the one true Savior. We see in your word that your character is revealed in almost every passage that uh, we read. And so we are so thankful, Father, for how you have made yourself known to us and how you have restored us to you. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, uh, let's read this together. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So to help us understand or better understand this passage, uh, we should know to whom the book of Hebrews is written and why. The book is written to both Jewish believers and unbelievers. To Jewish believers, it was meant to describe that in Christ, they have a new and better covenant and a new and better high priest. It is also helpful to know the challenges that these new Jewish believers were facing each day. They were ostracized and shunned by their former Jewish community. They were banished from participating in any religious ceremonies or having access to priests and sacred places. Now, these practices had been a part of the Jewish culture since the revealing of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. These new believing Jews were considered by unbelieving Jews to be unclean and worse than Gentiles. Even after they'd accepted the new covenant, it was tempting for them to go back to their old religion with their families and friends. The book of Hebrews was written to give them confidence and to strengthen their faith in the new covenant and their new high priest. The, the passage that we're reading today describes Christ's intercession for us as our high priest and his ministry for us in heaven. We can't help be, but be comforted and encouraged by the words of truth that are in these verses. Let's look together at verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Jesus is our high priest who went to the cross as the perfect sacrifice. Our perfect priest, our perfect high priest, then passed through the heavens and is now seated at the Father's right hand. Jesus is in heaven. And as our high priest, we have access to God through him. He is interceding for us daily to the Father. The latter part of verse 14, in the latter part of verse 14, it says, let us hold fast our confession. What is meant by our confession? This is our profession of faith. To hold fast is our obligation as a believer. We are to cling to the gospel, to cling to Christ. 
And why would we not cling to Christ knowing that everything that we are and everything that we have has been given to us by him? We must also realize that it is not within our power to hold fast or cling to our confession. That power comes from the Holy Spirit. From verse 14, we see that we have a high priest who is the Son of God, who is in heaven interceding for us. And now in verse 15, we see our high priest has endured every temptation so that he can relate to our every thought or emotion and any circumstance that we are facing. Verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Jesus is God. And at his incarnation, he took on the nature of man. He was one person with two natures, God and man. And as one author puts it, God became man to share triumphantly the temptation and the testing and the suffering of men in order that he might be a sympathetic and understanding high priest. Our high priest knows exactly how we feel and what we are going through. And this should take away any fear that the God of the universe does not understand. Our high priest has been tempted with every temptation that we have experienced, yet he is without sin. This tells us that with the power of the Holy Spirit, we can resist any temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as, as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. Not only is Jesus in heaven interceding for us, but he knows our every situation. He knows that when we're troubled, when we're discouraged, when we're hurt, or even when we're tempted. And as we go on to verse 16, it continues on about our high priest. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace in the, to help in the time of need. In verse 16, we learn that as a believer, we can approach God with confidence, knowing that we will receive mercy and grace all the days of our life. He is a sympathetic and understanding high priest. Our need for him is continual. It is all day, every day. He is our advocate and our creator who knows us better than we know ourselves. If you're here today and do not know Jesus as your high priest, we want you to know that we are very glad that you are here. We pray that you would ask any one of the elders or the person who brought you to describe and to talk with you what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ and that we beg you to be reconciled to God. Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, <clears throat> resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So we plead with you today, because you have no way of knowing when death will come to your door, and after death, it's too late. Hebrews 9 tells us that it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. Please consider bowing your knee to Jesus today and join us in celebrating this time of communion. However, if you choose not to, please allow the bread and the juice to pass you by. Men, please come in service. You may take communion on your own. I'll be back in a few minutes to close our time in prayer. <clears throat>